got some tuna and salmon. Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. Just wanted to quickly let you know before this video starts, I do obviously talk all about calories, tracking, everything related to food, fitness, fat loss, that type of thing. So if that does trigger you, please do not watch this video. Click out of it now because it is not the video for you. And please do remember everything I talk about in this video is just my experience. It's my opinion and I'm not an expert in the slightest. Please don't take anything that I'm doing and think that you need to also do it as well because that's not the case. I'm just sharing my life, my experience, I'm not I'm not telling you how to eat and what to eat but yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video and please let me know if you want to see more what I eat in a days and like full days of training and whatnot so yeah enjoy the video Good morning everyone. Apologies if you can hear any instruction. Today we're going to be doing a full day of eating and training while on a cut. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I've also decided to start training for something very exciting. But I'm not like fully decided on it yet because it's a big commitment. But it's also a very cool opportunity at the same time. So we are going to be training legs today. One thing that I'm also like really annoyed at myself for not doing is taking photos and measurements. I don't know why I don't do this because I think it's a much better way to track progress than just the scale. But I'm also like well into it now so I'm like is there any point? I don't know. But I don't know why I don't do that like because then you can clearly see differences. And If you're on any type of like fitness, cart, whatever it may be, take photos, take measurements. You could be like two kilos down and you could look completely different or your weight could not change at all and you could look completely different so oh it's so hot in here spring is upon us how cute is this set i've been influenced by holly b fitness on youtube and instagram she wears define and i've seen so many people particularly on tiktok wear define and i'm pretty sure it's a uk brand but i got this color and i also got an orange pair because they make your bum look fabulous I always find buying activewear very hard to justify, but I'm very glad I did because I love the color of this. It looks like it's a halter neck and the shorts just make your bum look so good, but it's not like a super scrunch bum. We'll be testing it out today. Why is she sitting like that? <laughs> Okay, we are back from the gym. It was an okay 
okay session. I'm trying to incorporate deadlifts, which I feel like people either love or hate. You have to get the form dead on, otherwise it just hurts your back. It's just really good for running and getting stronger overall. I tend to always feel it somewhat in my back, no matter what I do. I think I have okay form. I didn't film it because I was just getting frustrated. I did, I think I did like a warm up set and then like I tried to do it, change like the stance a little bit, but I don't know. I just always feel it, feel it on my left lower back. And I always try to make sure that I like warm up my legs, get my hip flexors moving and I get the glutes going, just making sure everything's warmed up. But I don't know, deadlifts are just not my friend, so. But overall it was okay. But my go-to breakfast, two rice cakes, avocado, cottage cheese, mustard, kimchi, and an egg. Because I like to have a bit of a smaller breakfast because I prefer to have more of my calories. For like lunch and dinner. That's just me. Since I am on a cut, I do weigh all my food because I track it. So I know exactly what I'm eating because the way to drop body fat is to eat, obviously, in a calorie deficit. Avocado it looks a bit sad. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Avocado cottage cheese is such a good combo. Oh, she's a little bit stiff. Salt. Egg. I like using rice cakes because I don't like gluten-free bread. And I do my best to eat gluten-free for my gut health. Um, I definitely don't eat 100% gluten-free. Definitely not. For the most part, I think I'm okay. Um, you definitely do not have to eat gluten-free in a fat loss phase. I just do it for my gut health because of my results indicated that I'm a bit sensitive to gluten. Some everything bagel seasoning. And then some kimchi. I love kimchi so much. Source of probiotics. We love fermented foods. There she is. The perfect way to cook an egg like this is you put a bit of water in the pan, cover it with a lid, and then the steam like cooks the top of it without you actually having to flip the egg. It's genius. I saw it on a TikTok once and my life has never been the same. Spicy honey. This is, it's spicy. It's in the honey section at Woolies. Do I do it on top of the egg? Let's do it on one. I don't want, ooh, do it a little bit. Oh, it's like melty. Oh, that'll do. That is my breakfast. Mm. This is probably a very runny egg. Oh no, that's quite good actually. <gasps> Perfection. The sweetness of the honey is actually really good. Yummy. I'm showered. I'm gonna make a second coffee of the day. I tend to try and have two coffees a day, sometimes three, if I really think I need it or it just works out that way. But if you've been watching, you'll know that I've been loving protein coffee. It's so easy to make. I just put in one sachet of Before You Speak Performance Coffee. This is my favorite, the OG flavor. And then you could put more. I do about five grams of protein powder. I like the Naked Harvest vanilla pancake butter. Naked Harvest, if you're watching, please bring back the white chocolate caramel swirl or whatever it was called. It was so good. That was my favorite flavor. And it is discontinued because of the limited edition. But this is equally quite nice. So five to 10 grams usually. You could do more. Um, I also like it because it sweetens up. Ooh. It sweetens up the coffee a little bit because I used to often put in just artificial sweetener, which I don't do anymore. Blender up. If you haven't got one of these like little hand mixes, they help so much when it comes to just blending. Pop in my milk. This is my favorite milk. It's the Pure Harvest, or, oh, it's covered in coffee, <laughs> organic almond milk. I like it because the ingredients are filtered water, organic whole activated almonds, organic brown rice, plant calcium, and sea salt. That's it. And it tastes really good. I'm not going to put any, oh, do I want to put makeup on today? Maybe later. I'm just gonna put some eyebrow gel in. I can't be bothered to do anything else. The way I feel when you walk in the room. When you walk in the room. It's not optional. How gravity just pulls me right to you. To you. Even the dark, they still see light. Even the birds still see light.
Okay, back from the supermarket. Picked up a few things. The one thing that I go through so much of during this cut, I've got food in my teeth, the most is lettuce. And I know it's not good for the environment to get it in like plastic bags, but butter lettuce is the best. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just lettuce, but it's, I don't know, it tastes the best. I don't know why this is so like, pop. But I use this in my salads, in my rice paper rolls, which I'm gonna make in a second. Brown rice cakes go through a lot of these as well. Great for snacking. I would say my main sources of protein would definitely be eggs, cottage cheese, tuna and salmon and extra lean red meat this one is the more expensive one but the calories are very very different because the fat is much lower on this one and i find that incorporating red meat in my diet makes a big difference in my energy levels got some tuna and salmon two containers of mustard because they were on sale this is the best one in my opinion american mustard and I also got two of my favorite sweet chili sauce. This is from Mingle. The ingredients on this are so good, which sauces can definitely have lots of like artificial things, especially if it's like a low calorie sauce. Carrots, cucumbers, some red capsicum, which apparently I need to look into this more, but these are referred to as a nightshade, which I should limit in my diet, but I do have these fairly often. I, I really like red capsicum, so I'm keeping them. Some nori sheets. These were also recommended to have in my diet. From my functional nutritionist as well um is that everything i got i think so and i'm gonna make some lunch because i'm starving and we're gonna make rice paper rolls i'm sorry if this does seem repetitive but when you are on a cart in a fat loss phase it's so much easier mentally to kind of eat the same thing or similar things every day because once you know what works it's so much easier to stick to that than like changing it up with that said it is also okay to change it up always shake your mustard before because the first squirt is always like watery this is the first time i've remembered to do this also another big thing that i changed in terms of my diet is i don't have any like protein yogurts or really most yogurts that are flavored or anything like that because the ingredients aren't the best by the way i just want to clarify i'm not an expert this is not me telling you what you should be doing in any way shape or form this is just my experience and what i've learned and what has helped me I'm not saying that you have to do this because i know plenty of people don't have an issue with any of those things that i just mentioned but this is my favorite yogurt it's the biodynamic organic whole milk yogurt so it's very like plain it's not sweet it's just like straight up yogurt so it took me a little while to get used to it but i actually really like it and i use it a lot for sauces and like extra protein as well because it has five grams of protein per serve this cottage cheese are probably the main forms of dairy that i consume i'm still on the hunt to find a cottage cheese that is you know fairly organic and natural and doesn't have additives and whatever that doesn't taste like asshole they didn't have any cottage cheese today either and like i mentioned before i use my fitness pal to track everything i think that's kind of like the most commonly used tracker it's also good because you can kind of pre-plan your day so you know exactly what you're eating so there's no guessing involved sometimes i do a bit of guessing though <laughs> i like to mix together salmon and tuna for my protein because i like the combination I feel so lucky i met you i still can't believe that I get to see those eyes from more than tonight. Swear you must have felt from the sky, and I feel so lucky I met you. Spend my whole life waiting for someone like you, baby. And all these broken roses led to you. Spend my whole life waiting for someone like you, baby. And all these broken roses led. So lucky I met you and I still can't believe that I get to see those eyes from more than tonight. Swear you must have felt from the sky and I feel Okay, here are my rice paper rolls. I usually make like five and I feel like that's always a good amount. And then I like to have mine with coconut aminos, kind of in place of soy sauce, more mustard, and more sweet chili sauce. So I'm gonna dig into this. It's so good and it's a really nice, like fresh, summery punch, I think. Oh 
Alrighty, for dinner, I decided to make my big salad. I crave this so much. I love it. I will eat the same thing over and over and over again until I get sick of it. And that can last for a very long time. I just pretty much top up, honestly, a very random concoction of vegetables. This might seem very strange to some people. Kind of starts off normal. We've got cucumber, some red capsicum, mushrooms, and then there's some zucchini there as well. For the sauce, I kind of use the yogurt mustard sweet chili, some other spices. I also throw a bit of lemon juice in there. And then I'm using some mints, smashing that all together. And then I've cooked some of the veggies, which definitely might seem strange to kind of mix that in with a salad, but I love it. I also decided to add some egg whites for extra protein. Now that I like watch this back, I'm like, Connor, this is so weird, but honestly, don't knock it until you try it. I love this. I love that it's so big and filling. It's just so delicious, especially when you are in a fat loss phase. And I paired it with a remedy kombucha in wild berry. That's my favorite flavor. Like I mentioned throughout this video so far, I have briefly kind of touched on gut health and how that has really helped me in every way, shape and form. Honestly, for one, it has completely changed my skin. I'm going to insert some photos. I know this isn't directly related to necessarily eating and training, but at the same time, I think it does and I think it should. Before I say anything now and what I've said throughout the video, please remember that I am not an expert and I'm not telling you to do this and what I'm saying should not be taken as gospel, not even in the slightest, but I want to pop some photos of my skin on the screen of what it kind of always looked like most of the time. If you've been around for a while, you know that I had really bad acne most of my teenage years and then I went on Accutane in 2018, got rid of it, was on the pill for like two years and for the most part my acne did go away from Accutane but I think eventually when removing all of those things, I just constantly had hormonal acne and I knew it was hormonal because it was just always around my mouth constantly. It was always a bit worse around my cycle, but it was just always there. And I did think maybe I could be eating things that could be making it worse, but I didn't know for sure. So I decided to see a functional nutritionist in April. Was it April or was it March? It actually might've been March. It's been it's been a good six months of me kind of following uh, my protocol. And I've been to like naturopaths and stuff in the past. It's been very expensive to see her and work with her, but my golly, it's worked. Unless it's just some weird coincidence that my skin is now the best it has ever been since probably being an infant. <laughs> my skin is so clear. Guys, look at it. Tap on freaking wood, but look at my skin. I do have one pimple here. I'm putting that down to my period. But for the most part, my skin is like crystal clear. It definitely took a while to kick in and I did blood tests, um, a stool test. I've actually just done like a hormonal test. That one's mainly more for my painful periods because every now and then I will get a really, really painful period. I don't think it's endometriosis. A couple of people have commented that. I don't think it's that because it's, it's only every now and then. The main things that I was trying to fix was my skin and my like digestion and bloating. I often felt quite bloated and I had really, really poor digestion. I honestly felt like I was constipated a lot of the time. That has also been completely fixed. I feel like bloating, oh, my face is getting hot it's hot in here. <laughs> I feel like my bloating is next to zero. Digestion is really good. Could not be happier. And again, I wanna reiterate that I'm not saying that this is what you need to do, but I'm just sharing that it did help me. I know I've mentioned throughout this video that I try to eat fairly gluten-free. I feel like this is a controversial topic because I don't necessarily need to eat gluten-free. However, some of my results from like my blood test and stool test did indicate that I'm a bit sensitive to gluten. So that can be beneficial for my, the painful period side of things. But like I said, I definitely don't stick to it. I probably have gluten every single day. Honestly, I had grilled last night and I did not get the like gluten-free bun because that looked sad. <laughs> so I got the traditional bun. But for the most part, that's what I tried to do. The big thing that I changed when it came to my diet was avoiding artificial things. And I'm not saying that these are bad and you can't have them and you shouldn't have them. I do think though they were harmful to my gut. They did have a negative effect on me, especially when I have gone through like fat loss phases I would always gravitate towards you know no sugar this low cal this a lot of like fitness recipes on TikTok and the internet are very like aimed towards like sugar free this sugar free that low fat this no fat that you know which again <laughs> I don't want to be taken out of context here I'm not saying that that's bad for plenty of people it's great for me and my digestion not so great so I instantly removed things like artificial sweetener in my coffee and like lots of no sugar things I really try and limit any 
anything along those lines. I'd honestly get stomach aches if I would eat too many sugar-free things and I would have to like lie down flat to make the pain go away. And I definitely think that has had a big impact on my gut health for sure, along with taking like probiotics and stuff like that, which I'm not gonna go into because that's all tailored to me and it wouldn't be the same for anyone out there. So yeah, that is kind of my experience with my gut health. I'm very glad that I took the time and I'm very grateful that I was in the position to be able to spend the money because it's a bit of a pricey thing, you know, getting tests, having certain supplements. I'm very grateful that I was able to do that. If you are thinking about embarking on a journey like that, just know it takes time. Like I said, it's it's been six months. This is where we're at. I think the clear skin is definitely my favorite part especially if you experienced acne before. And it also makes me want to take more care of my skin. I'm really into my serums and moisturizers now because before I felt like everything would just make me break out. That's my experience with gut health. Again, please take everything with a grain of salt. I'm not an expert, not in the slightest. This was just my experience. <laughs> Running slow is so hard because you don't really like how fast you're going, even if you feel like it. I think I just stepped in shit. Good morning. I've decided to turn this what I eat in a day into I guess what I eat in two days. Why not? It gives a little bit more variety. Plus I can kind of show you all the forms of training that I'm doing. So we're going to be doing an upper body session. Anytime I do a run and a workout, it's usually an upper body and a run. Like I very rarely do legs and a run. Sometimes if I'm feeling really good, definitely not doing a leg workout <laughs> and like a 10k run. Definitely not. But yeah, my run felt really good this morning. If you watch my weekly vlogs a couple vlogs ago, I mentioned how I tested out my Apple Watch and my Garmin. Well, I tried to record my run on Strava. And again, it was 1.3 kilometers out, which is huge. Again, my Garmin saying I ran like eight kilometers, 8.3 kilometers, and Strava saying I ran seven. I have Googled a few different things that you can kind of do to help calibrate your watch better and help it be more accurate. Like when you turn it on, basically wait for two minutes for the GPS to kind of like get a better picture of where you are, even though it'll, it'll say like GPS connected, just wait two extra minutes minutes or whatever and I also think it's because I run through trees a lot which I think is a big factor in probably messing up the pacing and distance and whatnot which again just is messing with my head because it's making me feel like I'm a fraud and I'm actually not good at running at all it just sucks because where I live there are lots and lots of trees so it makes sense that the GPS would be a little bit lost if I'm running through the trees I also want to try like pre doing the route if that makes sense you can kind of like map out the routes in Garmin before you do it I can try that because yeah I'm guessing in that instance I'm like is Strava more accurate or is the Garmin but then at the same time I'm like maybe Strava's inaccurate surely it's not surely it's not inaccurate any advice again would be greatly appreciated because I don't know I don't know anyway I'm gonna go in do an upper body session I kind of want to maybe do some handstands at the end it's been so long since I've done handstands and they're just so much fun I've been running through my fantasy I'm doing 93 Tell me where the sparks come from Don't know that we both bring some Doing something that I can't explain Lately, no, I'm not the same You're just like magic Not sure what it is, but baby, you have it Life's better ever since you have it You're just like magic Move through, baby, move however you want to Let the night last till the sun shines Superstitious with a blind of faith When we disappear and levitate Now I know where the sparks come from One touch I was so far gone Still something that I can't explain Lately no I'm not the same You're just like magic Not sure what it is but baby you have it Life's better ever since you have it
decided to add a cheese slice because I'm feeling a little razzle dazzle. I felt very weak at the gym today. The hard thing about when you're in a deficit and being a female, on your period, you tend to feel like hungrier and you need more calories. And I would definitely recommend to eat a little bit more when you're on your period or coming up to your period. I personally get really hungry kind of the week before my period. It's also very normal to kind of hold a little bit more weight. The number on the scale is kind of creeping up a little bit, but I definitely know that's just because of my period and you just gotta keep going. Don't freak out and think, oh my God, I need to drop my calories more. Just keep doing what you're doing. And once you know your period comes and goes, it'll kind of go back to normal for his forgiveness on his hand. And not only did he just forgive- I definitely should have put the cheese on top of the egg and like melted it in the pan. Oh my God. His blessing, I said, this continued for a or two. I love editing outside. It's lunchtime. Oh, I can already feel the doms in my upper body. Oh man, oh, I always hit that like two to 4 p.m. slump. It's even more hardcore when I'm five days out from my period. I don't know if I talk about my period a lot, but it influences your life a lot. So I'm not hating on it. It is time to make some lunch. I'm gonna make like a mince pasta. And I do wanna acknowledge the fact that I have the blessing of being able to prepare things at home, which most people would not have the chance to. I definitely wanna make more like take to work friendly lunches. Got me pot boiling and we're gonna make some pasta. I'm gonna use this lentil pulse pasta. It has 28.8 grams of protein per serve. Yes, I'm in the same shirt as the gym, but I swear I didn't sweat that much. 28.8 grams of protein. That is a win if you ask me. Again, when you are in a fat loss phase, eating higher protein is gonna benefit you. Everyone's protein goal is gonna be different. Some days I hit it, some days I miss miserably, but I just do the best that I can. I'm gonna do 80 grams of this because pasta is a little bit higher in calories. My good old friend, sweet chili and mustard. Does this not look so good? It has 46 grams of protein.